Now's the time for a bigger challenge. Before you lies an Imperial Keep, guarded by a certain Lord Rusimov. He had a bit of an accident that melted most of his face, but he's no less vigilant a soldier. He's been sent to guard an object that could threaten our campaign. Get in there, and burn the rest of him, Underlord. Hey guys, welcome back to more War for the Overworld. So, funny story. I had actually recorded level 2, but I took a small break between level 2 and level 3, and I accidentally deleted the videos the, the chopped up videos for level 2 without realizing it so I actually went ahead by like 5 levels uh, before realizing I had done that so here we are <laughs> uh, off to kill Lord Rusimov the Burnt again we've punctured the veil of this world through a schism a point of weakness in the bonds between realms. Unfortunately for us, the Empire has crafted defenses to keep us from the heart of their kingdom. These inhibitors prevent underlords from trespass. But whether it's bone or stone, it can be broken. Oh, I suspect yeah. that this Empire force has yet to taste true battle. But before you go engaging them, you'll need to muster up some minions. Unfortunately for me, your time in the ether has left you a weak husk of your former self. In order to reacquire your powers, you will need to access the veins of evil. Open them now, and use a sin to unlock the archive. Archive unlocked! This room will allow your minions to research additional sins, which can be spent to recover your lost powers. Build one now, to begin researching additional sins. So, just a few minor random things. Um, some differences with this game that I've noticed as I've been playing it. Uh, this game is, of course, does of course take a lot of uh, heavy inspiration from the Dungeon Keeper series, uh, but there are some very vital differences in between each one. You'll need to claim the nearby gateway before minions can enter your dungeon. And uh, there's a there's a few ways to tell those differences. Um, just trying to put my thoughts together here. Uh, in the different tutorials for um, for Dungeon Keeper, they didn't have... I, I think I actually preferred the way Dungeon Keeper did it, because they didn't have... Uh, they didn't interrupt gameplay to tell you how to do things. Uh, with this game, they do interrupt your, your gaming. They interrupt your gameplay. Because uh, when a new room or a new uh, a new spell or whatever is unlocked uh, everything just stops for that particular uh, object whereas in the original dungeon keeper you just had um, a, a bunch of scrolls has your dungeon. a cultist has found its way into your dungeon Attracted by the magical tomes within your archive, these minions will spend most of their time researching sins for you. Though they are weak combatants, they have the power to curse your foes, making them weak to your other minions' blows. Your minions are unfortunate beings of weak flesh. Build them a lair so they may rest. But, uh... Probably one of the is uh, scrolls would appear rather than the game stopping. Basically, the advisor telling you do this, and then the entire then the game not really letting you do anything else until you had done that. Um, 
And once again, as I said with Dungeon Keeper, they didn't interrupt the gameplay. The scrolls came up, but it didn't force you to utilize what they had just uh, pointed out to you. So that you weren't stuck, you weren't having to halt what you were doing. It, it didn't get, as, as Ego Raptor put it, it didn't or he put it in one of his um, uh, sequelitis videos, they didn't interrupt your forward momentum. Uh, of course, he was talking about something else entirely, but uh, it's still the same, same basic thing. They didn't interrupt your forward momentum. So you didn't have to worry so much about... Uh, you, you could still build everything how you wanted it, whereas in this, Yes, the dungeons are yours to build, absolutely. But when they give you something new, you absolutely have to utilize that first. And that actually does get in the way of you playing the game. So I, as I said, I think I prefer Dungeon Keeper's way of doing it with that. That you have the scrolls pop up, and yes, the advisor can still come in and tell you how to do stuff, but the scrolls explained how everything worked, and you didn't have to worry so much about uh, a bunch of random... about about every time you got something new about interrupting your progress just for that thing. Um, I do, however, like the barracks. Minions can train on their own. You don't have to pay them to train, which that was Your a little annoying. Your cult work hard to earn a new sin. Use it within the veins of evil to unlock the tavern. This room provides your minions with succulent cooked pig flesh and stout ales. After eating a meal within its hearthed halls, their spirits will be raised, increasing their productivity for a short time time. This room provides your minions with I succulent stuck there. You'll still need a slaughter pen in order to keep your tavern stocked. But in a pinch, you can always drop some alternative meat into the grinder. But I... Rooms will only attract a certain number of minions <laughs> before <laughs> becoming full. In order to attract more, you will need to expand them Build one now, and remember that the tavern is unique and must be built at least three by five in order to be effective. Let's hope your vault is brimming, Underlord. It is payday. Nothing in this life is free, Underlord, and you'll regularly need to pay your minions for their hard work. Be sure to keep an eye on your reserves, for if you've not enough gold for their wages, They'll be swift to find gainful employment elsewhere. Fortunately, your minions will return some of their earnings by buying meals within your own tavern. What a delicious arrangement. Are there bugs going across the floor? There are. There's cockroaches going across the floor. But, um... In Dungeon Keeper... In, dungeon, in both of the Dungeon Keeper games, uh, you had a barracks to train... They called it a training room rather than a barracks, but... Um, the You actually had to pay your minions Something to train. Out there. Scouts, go find what the hell's making all that racket. Rally your minions to defeat these scouts once they breach your dungeon. Let's keep Sarusim off in the dark a little while longer. Prophecy unlocked. You should try using the lightning and heal spells to assist your minions in combat. But, um. There. But, uh. Once again, you had, to, you had to pay your minions to train, and it wasn't like every level you paid them, it was every couple of seconds you paid them. So. Especially in Dungeon Keeper 1, where money was everything, your spells cost gold rather than mana. A training room, while useful, was a huge drain on your finances. Uh, that was, however, one of the reasons you had gem seams, was so that 
as the uh, as the training room trained your finances, you trained people up, and um, and it it the health of pretty much paid is for represented itself. by petals surrounding their unit shield. Once no petals remain, a creature will fall unconscious and soon die, unless returned to its lair to recover. They should be back by now. Ugh. Bar the doors. We wait for reinforcements. Look how easily your minions cut down these sappers. If I didn't know better, I'd say the Empire is woefully unprepared. Once minions are rested, you can leave them to their work or force them to train by dropping them in a barracks. But, um... But, um... That's there... enough training for now. When you're ready, rally your minions to the inhibitor and defeat Sarusimov. Can I speak now, Mendakius? That's a bit of a spoiler, actually. But, um... Oh, where was I? Training, yes. Uh, training was a drain on your resources in Dungeon Keepers 1 and 2, and it made it a little more difficult to do anything. But, you did have the gem seams, so it wasn't too bad. Now, every level didn't have gem seams, and in levels where you didn't have gem seams, uh, you did have uh, the bonus of... Give me, give me that artifact. You did have the bonus of loads and loads of gold and different spells that could give you gold. Uh, so, it wasn't like you were totally without options. But it still was difficult. Uh, in this in this game, I've noticed a lot of gem shrines around, or gold shrines around, which are infinite sources of wealth. Uh, in fact, I've seen one in every level. I actually don't like the inclusion of that because it makes it too easy. Uh, gold is something that you actually should have to worry about. You shouldn't just have whatever gold you want. You shouldn't just have infinite access to, to resources. Resources should be limited, except in missions where, of course, if there just wasn't enough space to put gold on the map, or things are going to be a big drain, then that's the only time that, that you should have the, the gold shrines. Uh, in levels like it's actually funny, as I get further in the game, gold shrines do become a little less populous. But, at the same time, they are not... <laughs> it, it's... At the worst places. They actually, like, reverse... Like, the early levels, I didn't need gold shrines, really. But where I'm at, oh god, I need them. I have to use so many traps to hold back an army, and excuse me, I just I I don't have the money for it. I've got to turn my own minions into gold statues, which hurts my which hurts me. Uh, and in the in the end, it just becomes more of a bother to than it, than it's worth. Now we're actually going to start rallying and send these guys forward. I'm going to hold them all there until they all gather. But, um... There, there is a lot to worry about with, uh... With War for the Overworld. Money is beginning to be a, a chief concern. But, I, as I said, I am glad that the barracks is not a drain on the resources. It's just payday and buying rooms. Traps. Um... Traps actually are more expensive the now. The damn walls. Steal yourselves, lads. Yeah, traps are actually more expensive now because you don't have as big of a drain on your resources. But traps your are also minions are in combat. Shut the fuck up, advisor. Uh, you also have the traps are also a huge drain on your mana as well, and you can only go so far. If you look up here, you can actually see that there's a small bar. Right there. And that bar is the cutoff point for your mana. 
Uh, after Your you minions get... minions are in combat. No fucking shit. Uh... Your minions are in combat. I hate you, advisor. That, that happens too often. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, developers, if you're watching, there desperately needs to be something that we can do to, um, to limit how often he tells us things like that, like generic announcements, but, uh, let's Your minions see. are under attack. I completely forgot what I was saying now. Um... So I'm gonna go on to something else. One of the things I really like about this game, actually, is the difference in the lords. The light, the light is gone. You're, I am extinguished. Um, it seems almost charitable to put him out of his misery. Oh god, I forgot. He's there. Well done, Underlord. You're learning much faster this time. We've barely even started, and you already have a notch on your belt. Well done, Underlord. But there's no rest for the wicked. Two inhibitors still stand between us and the mainland. But after your butchery of poor Lord Rusevov, I doubt they'll be as weakly defended. So yeah, uh, there there is a very noticeable difference between each Lord. Um, they might be, uh, different modeled versions of enemies we've already faced, like Lord Rusimov is a more powerful juggernaut, um, uh, the next lord is a more powerful Templar, and just things like that. That's actually pretty cool, I don't mind that. I, I just like that the, in, once again, the original Dungeon Keeper game, Lords of the Land were their own thing, but they were all the same thing. Uh, whereas in this, lords, uh, lords of the land and lords are very, very different from each other. Uh, but that's enough of that. This level has gone on for a bit. Uh, I will save more discussion for another video. Uh, I will actually be... This is between... I had actually done this level that's glowing right here, but it crashed on me partway through. No, I died partway through, that was it. So I will actually, uh, this is being filmed between when I died and when I resume. Uh, so I will continue more discussion in that uh, latter half of the video. Uh, so hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, this has been Kanuda playing more War for the Overworld. And I will see you guys in the next, uh, in the next episode. Uh, the next few episodes, unfortunately, the commentary is not quite so... It, it, there's not as much of it because I'm concentrating so hard uh, but I will be I will be commentating more as I go through these uh, levels uh, it's just I was out of out of touch for a while and uh, I got back into the swing of not talking during games but anyway that is the end of this video if you guys have enjoyed this please leave a like a favorite a comment uh, definitely press that subscribe button share these videos with your friends and uh, if the developers of War for the Overworld are watching, then thank you guys for making this game. There are, dif there are differences, and of course we're not going to be happy with everything, but overall, I love this game. It is so much fun, and I have been waiting so long to play a game like this. So thank you guys sincerely for making this game, and I will see everyone in the next video. Thanks guys, bye bye.